Hello everybody, this is Danny from Deep South Homestead. Uh, out here to do porch time again today. And guys, whew, the heat has done come back in, but you know what? The mornings have been really nice. We've had an opportunity here to experience some morning temps in the very deep south in the low 60s, and mid 60s. I mean, that's been, that's phenomenal for this time of the year. Guys, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm just amazed at how the weather has changed that much. Now, I do want to take time right now and I want to say thank you to all of you guys for your thoughts and your prayers about the passing of my father. Um, that means a lot to me. Uh, and we feel the prayers uh, coming in. Uh, Dad was a great man. He was a stern man, but he was a very, very knowledgeable, a very gentle, loving kind of father. Um, didn't have much outward emotion to show about anything, but guys, he was he was a great man, and I, I feel honored uh, to have had him uh, for a father. And I do appreciate, once again, all of your thoughts and prayers uh, through this time for my family. Um, I'm, I'm just, I'm glad that he's gone on to be with the Lord. He doesn't have to suffer anymore. Uh, he was not, my dad was just, he wasn't from this time in history. Uh, he didn't understand it. And, and... I'm, it was making it very difficult for him to understand. So, and I'm kind of glad that uh, things has turned out the way they have. Now, my dad, they say, passed from COVID. Uh, guys, every time I call the hospital, I got a different answer for everything. You know, so that's one of my reasons that I believe that most of this is just fake. Uh, is, and I know the I know the virus is real. Now, don't get me wrong about that. But I would call the hospital. I got you know, they would tell me one thing. I would call the hospital again. Later on, they would tell me something totally different. You know, yes, he has COVID. No, we don't know if he has COVID. We're going to test him. No, we're not going to test him because the nursing home tested him. Uh, I will call you whenever the test comes in. Uh, sir, we never tested your dad. Is dad on the COVID floor? Yes, he's on the COVID floor. Why is he on the COVID floor? Uh, well, we were told he had COVID, so we put him on the COVID floor. So if he doesn't have COVID, he's going to have it now that he's on the floor because the nurses go from room to room, and he more than likely will get it. So I said, why do y'all think he has COVID? Uh, well, he has a problem breathing. Uh, lots of people have a problem breathing at 80-something years old. Well, in the, because COVID's going around now, we automatically, if someone has problem breathing, we automatically know that it's COVID. I'm like, that's ludicrous. This is stupid. I said, he might just be dehydrated. Well, he is dehydrated, sir. And his heart rate's uh, up to 140 beats a minute. I said, so he's dehydrated. He's got 140 beat heart, heart rate a minute. I said, he's naturally going to be short of breath. I said, get the man some oxygen. Get him some fluids. Well, that's what we've done. I said, does he have any other symptoms of COVID? Uh, well, not really, not right now. But we know that he probably has COVID because he's short of breathing. And guys, that's what I went through for two weeks. Uh, totally drove me up the wall trying to deal with these people. So I was glad that my dad finally got out of this mess and he's gone on to be with the Lord and, uh, and he's probably in better shape right now than he's ever been in his whole life. So, but thank you once again. But guys, today on Porch Time, uh, I've been trying to come up with uh, something that I thought would be beneficial to everybody. And the one thing that seems to be going around more than anything else right now is what's coming this fall? How can I be ready for it? This winter, oh my gosh, what am I going to do this winter if COVID is still in existence and they lock everything down and we can't do anything? How will I survive this winter? Well, guys, you better make that decision now. Because the bottom line is, you're not going to just take a seed and go out and throw it in the ground and it's going to make food and you're going to survive. That has been probably one of the biggest myths that I've seen floating around for the last several years about prepping and surviving and all that stuff. People stocking up on seeds. 
If they ain't no food and they can't go to a grocery store and they can't get anything, by golly, I've got my seeds and I'm going to survive. It, you'll probably die. Let me just say that. Because first of all, you don't just put a seed in the ground and grow something. Now you'll get something. You'll get a result. It may not be the result that you're looking for, but you'll get a result. And some people get lucky. Some people plant gardens out there and they find one thing in a garden and all of a sudden it grows up and it does fantastic and they go, oh my God, I'm, I'm, so, I'm a success. No, you're not a success. You just found something that happened to like the environment where you're in at the moment. Next year you may plant that and not be able to get it to grow at all. Yeah, I mean, guys, it's, it's amazing. I've done this my whole life, so I'm speaking from experience. I've grown some of the most beautiful gardens in the past, and I mean, I tell my wife, I'm like, oh my gosh, next year we're going to grow this same thing because I think I found the perfect thing, and next year I grow the same thing, and it does absolutely nothing because the weather conditions are totally different. We're going into a grand solar minimum, and guys, as we do, the weather anomalies are totally off the charts. Nothing grows like it used to grow. The intensity of the sun is completely different than what it used to be. The UV rays from the sun, the ultraviolet rays are not there like they need to be to cause the photosynthesis in the plants to actually work like they need to. You've got to have the right amount of shade on that plant now to keep the intensity of the sun from just whacking it. If something says full sun now, usually you, you can only give it like six hours. If you give it any more than that, it usually damages the plant over a period of time. So there's so much that's changing about gardening. One and I are just blown away. We, stuff we usually plant every year and just flourishes, we're having trouble even getting it to grow. You know? So don't think because you've had a success with something that from this point forward, oh my gosh, I can do this. You know, no, it's probably not going to happen. Growing vegetables and growing food for survival is an art. It is a science. There's a lot of science that goes on in that soil out there. That soil, as I had a, did a video on here a while back, that soil is alive, just like you're alive. And unless you understand what's going on in that soil and you understand how to make it happen, then, guys, you're not going to be successful at it. You've got to have the knowledge of what's going on in that soil. And you can do everything right. You can have everything in that soil that it needs. And the weather can change, and it can rain, and rain, and rain, and rain, and too much water can drown the roots in that plant where it don't get enough oxygen, and your plant can die. Or it can not rain, and you can get extreme heat, extreme drought, and it just withers up no matter how much you're watering it. It just doesn't pull out, and it doesn't do good. And you can hit it perfect weather, perfect everything, and then all of a sudden have a hailstorm come in, or a, a derecho like we had go across the United States here the other day, and totally wipe out everything that you have with, with 100 and something mile an hour winds. Guys, you're at the mercy of Mother Nature for your food supply. And going into a grand solar minimum makes it even more detrimental. A lot of people are just sitting back going, well, I'm gonna go to the farmer's market and get mine. Well, guys, look, if you can't grow it, a lot of times the farmers at the farmer's markets can't grow it. I mean, it's just, that's the bottom line. I encourage everybody who has any spot to put a greenhouse, please get yourself a greenhouse. Because with what's coming from the skies, that's being sprayed on us, the, the, you tend, the intensity of the sun, all these kind of things, guys, you need to have something in a controlled environment where you can grow you some food. Now, you may not grow enough to live off of completely, but guys, if you can just have something that you can walk out that door and put in your mouth and eat, you will not starve to death. And please, lettuces and stuff like that are fine supplements for anything to eat. They're, they're, they're great side dishes and sprouts and things like this, but don't make it your main source. You've got to have calories. You've got to have carbohydrates. You've got to have proteins. You need these things. If you're out struggling, working, trying to make something happen, you're burning calories. You need the calories, you need the proteins in your system in order to keep yourself going and to keep your immune system up. So understand the, the system, understand how it works. Because 
so much of what I see with people today is, well, I've got my, I've got my seed supply, I got it's a 30 year stock up of seeds. It's in a big can, it's good for 25 years. Let me tell you something. I've got seeds that I've saved. I planted from 2012, or last year. I had about a 75% success rate, and that's just from 2012 till now. I don't know if I trust seeds being in a can for 25 or 30 years. I have to test my stuff. I have seeds that's been saved for quite a long time. Some of them are still good. Some of them aren't. Things like carrot seeds and stuff like that, they only have like a one or two year life expectancy. You've got to plant two or three times as many as you normally plant in order just to get a decent harvest. So there's some things that you really need in your diet that you need to learn how to grow and save your own seeds from. Our forefathers, they learned to save their own seeds, and that is a lost art. And that's, that's something to hear at Deep South Homestead. We have several videos out about saving seeds, anything from asparagus to tomatoes to cucumbers to uh, whatever. We have, we're saving sweet potatoes, you know, for seed potatoes. We're saving our, our red Irish potatoes, our white Irish potatoes, all them for seed potatoes. Guys, we're, you know, our beans, all this kind of stuff. We have videos about saving seeds on all this stuff. And, guys, that is where the secret lies, is being able to save seed. Now, lots of people don't understand about saving seed. You cannot plant two cultivars side by side that have the same genus name and save seed from them and then come back true to their stock. They're going to become a hybrid. And a lot of people don't get that. You've got to have a separation of distance between stuff. I mean, corn, corn needs to be up to a quarter of a mile. So that's why here at Deep South Homestead, when we plant corn, we only plant one variety. And things like my, my peppers, if I'm going to save my seed for my peppers, I try to make sure there's at least 200 feet between peppers, different varieties. Uh, cucumbers, uh, same thing with cucumbers. Try to make sure there's several hundred feet between them. Okra, uh, 500 feet for okra. I mean, guys, there's lots of different things that we try. When we save our seeds here at Deep South Homestead, I've got to really do my research and make sure that when I put something in the garden, because we have like six or seven gardens now, we're fixing to down some of them and not use them anymore because we've got both of the greenhouses, but I'm actively learning all I can about saving more seeds than what I've ever saved. Because we sell some seeds here on our Etsy store and I want to make sure that when I sell a seed, it's a good seed. Now lots of what I'm planting right now because of the grand solar minimum is hybrids. Hybrids have lots of disease resistances to them. And guys, I'm learning that I've stocked up on tons of hybrid seeds. Just so that if something happens, I can't save a seed from a hybrid. I mean, I can, but I don't know what it's gonna come back as whether it's even edible when it comes back, or whether it has any taste whatsoever. But guys, we're, we bought up tons of hybrid seeds, just simply because I want to have enough seeds that if the weather and the conditions get really bad and uh, disease comes in really bad, that I've got something that's highly disease resistant, and maybe I'll get something off of them because they are disease resistant. A lot of my heirlooms that I have, when these diseases hit, they just knock them out because they don't have the immunity built into them that a hybrid does. So these are things that you have to understand if you're going to garden and be a success at it this winter. Uh, yes, you can grow things in the winter. If you have a greenhouse, you can provide yourself with some food in the greenhouses to keep you going throughout the winter. Wanda and I will be hopefully having plenty of videos up about growing stuff in those high tunnel greenhouses that we have. We're going to be trying to grow some broccoli, some cabbage, uh, carrots, onions, English peas. Guys, we're going to try to be growing all this stuff through the greenhouses through the winter months just to see how well it does because this is our first year actually using these high tunnels. And we have had such success just the first part of this year that we, that's the reason we built a second one. A lot of it has to do with our age, but it also has to do with the simple fact that guys, it's really been a big success. Now, 
I can't stress enough to try to use ground cover to control weeds, irrigation for watering and fertilization. Guys, liquid fertilizers, we're using some liquid phosphorus. A lot of people want to know we use liquid phosphorus from Dr. Earth. We're using uh, uh, calcium nitrate. That's allowing us to keep enough nitrogen to the plant and enough calcium to the plant so we don't end up with blossom end rot. Um, we're using um, some Dr. Earth Fertilize that is a bud and bloom grow. Uh, it does, it's doing really good. We're trying to constantly amend the soils. We, we're doing pH tests, making sure the pH is up where it needs to be because if the pH ain't where it needs to be at, around 6.8 to 7 for most plants, then you can put all the fertilizer you want to it. It will not utilize it. We're using Epsom salts because Epsom salts um, produce, you know, gives the magnesium that the plants need. Guys, we're supplementing with all different types of things in these high tunnel greenhouses, trying to figure out the best formulas. Now we are using the dirt that uh, we dug out of the pond from the bottom of it, that old black mucky dirt y'all seen. We've got huge piles of it out. We're letting it dry. We're taking the tiller, tilling it all up until it's a fine powder. Scooping that up, taking it in there, putting it in these raised beds, and guys, it's phenomenal what that dirt is doing. So, please understand that trying to survive what's coming this winter and this fall may be difficult because you're not just going to stick a seed in the ground. There's a lot more to it than that. Uh, I'm a veteran gardener, and guys, when I'm having trouble, I know people who've never grown to have a problem. Because what mom and daddy and grandpa and grandma used to do, sometimes it'll work, sometimes it won't work. It just depends. One and I have learned that even things like peppers that are heat-loving plants cannot take the intensity of the sun now that the grand solar minimum has started. And it's only going to get worse over the next several years. So guys, the advice on porch time today is, if there's any way possible, get yourself a greenhouse. If you don't have room for a greenhouse, then get yourself some containers that you can bring inside and grow stuff inside, get you a grow light. And let me mention something about grow lights. Until you get up to a 6,500 lumen, you, have, you do not have a grow light. Grow lights typically start around 6,500 lumens. You have an LED or you have a fluorescent light, and then things will grow under it, don't get me wrong, but if you want the maximum potential out of something, you need a 6,500 lumen and above to get the maximum growth that you need out of it. So guys, I guess porch time today is just, I just want, I want to get you prepared. I want to help you to understand that just having a seed bank is not enough. There is an art to growing food. There is a, a, a life cycle that goes on in that soil. The intensity of the weather that we're having is totally different than what it used to be. Plants will burn up in the sun now. Some plants that used to be partial sun are almost full shade plants now because of the intensity of the sun. It's just that simple. Now there are some things that, that do pretty fair out in the full sun right now, and that's like sweet potatoes. Mine are sitting out here now, they're doing fantastic. I mean, they look luscious and green and beautiful. Now the first ones I planted, we have a video coming about that. We've reached our 125 days. I've now reached 135 days on them. Uh, we dug some at 125, we're, we're now at 135. We're gonna dig a few more to see how it does, and if it looks like they can hold more, I may let them go a little longer if they get any better quality to them. So guys, prepare, because this fall and this winter of 2020 are very uncertain. Uh, with the elections coming up, you can expect just about anything to happen, because the, uh, the Democrats realize that they're at a position right now, there's lots of... Uh, appointed seats that's fixing to come available that if they have a good conservative in the office and these seats are appointed to a conservative that their agenda is shut off for the next 15 to 20 years 
and they're going to do everything in their power to make sure that this does not happen. So keep that in mind. So go vote this. Go and vote. Make sure that your vote counts. And guys, let me say something before I get off of here. The live stream that we done this Saturday night, Wanda and I got up Sunday morning and checked it. It had about 20-something ads in it. We did not put any ads in that video at all just to see what would happen. And guys, they had, a, they had an ad every two to two and a half to three minutes in it. We went back and watched it. And we went in and took most of them out. And whether they're going to put them back or not, I don't know. But this is what's happening to us. Porch time today. You will, under, you will see what I'm talking about. One and I usually put, a, uh, put an ad at the beginning, one at the end, and one in the middle. Anything else that's in this video is in there because it's been done by the other people, not us. And they do it because they know that this is educational and informational stuff. And rather than to, uh, to come at it from another angle, they just start throwing ads in there and that usually upsets a lot of people and people will just click off of it and they won't watch it. And guys, I encourage you, please, it's not us that does this. Please continue to watch because it is necessary for the information to get out there. It's the way that the powers to be is trying to suppress information from reaching people who really need it. So guys, I thought I'd throw that in right here at the end. Thank you for watching us. And I do pray that you receive the blessing from today. Thank you guys from Deep South Homestead.